Hey there, my name is Fernando, and I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. And today, I'm going to go over some of the newly released features in GitLab 15.4. GitLab has released the suggested reviewers open beta. Deciding the right person to review your merge request isn't always straightforward or obvious. With GitLab, we can now recommend a reviewer with suggested reviewers. Using the changes in a merge request and a project's contribution graph, machine learning powered suggestions appear in the reviewer dropdown in the merge request sidebar. Now let's take a look at this feature. Here within the merge request overview, when I edit the reviewers, you can see that there are some suggestions at the top. And when I scroll down, you can see that all the project members are listed. GitLab has also introduced enhancements to GitLab pages. These enhancements come in the forms of limiting the maximum number of custom domains per project. You'll now be able to limit the maximum number of custom domains per project at the instance level and strike the right balance for your needs. The default value is set to unlimited, but note that too many custom domains can cause slow response time. You're also able to get started with GitLab pages a lot easier. You can configure GitLab pages using the new pipeline wizard, a tool which makes it easy to create a .gitlab CI YAML for GitLab pages. Now let's see it in action. Within our project, we go down to the settings tab and click on pages. We are then taken to the pages wizard where we can go ahead and select our build image. Then we add this check to output files to public. Then we can go ahead and add the installation steps. And then we can go ahead and add the build steps. And after that, we can go ahead and commit the newly generated GitLab CI YAML. Note that this will override your current GitLab CI YAML to obtain the necessary information required to input values to GitLab Pages Wizard, see the links in the description. Next up in 15.4 is our improved CI-CD integration in Visual Studio Code. There are now new workflows within the tool where you can actually download artifacts as well as retry or cancel existing pipelines. You can also validate your GitLab CI YAML straight from Visual Studio Code. Let's take a quick look. Here I have VS Studio Code with the GitLab workflow extension. And once I click on this little GitLab icon, I can see all the issues that I'm either assigned to or have created, and I can add comments directly from the interface, as well as merge requests that I'm assigned to and reviewing or have created straight from the dropdown where I can see file diffs and perform a review by adding comments. Skipping forward, I can also see the pipeline run within the current branch, and I can click on a job to be linked directly to its appropriate page on GitLab. At the bottom of the application, I can click on the GitLab pipeline past icon to see additional options for the pipeline, such as downloading artifacts, creating a new pipeline from the current branch, or retrying the latest pipeline. These features are all very useful if you work within VS Code and will save you lots of time. Next up are static analysis analyzer updates. Within each GitLab release, we regularly update all of our security scanners in this release, you can see that the updates bring additional coverage, bug fixes, and improvements. The SAS Analyzer coverage has also been streamlined by replacing the SAS Analyzers used for JavaScript, TypeScript, React, Go, Python, and Java with SEMgrep-based scanning, which brings a more consistent user experience, faster scan times, and reduced CI minute usage. The SEMgrep-based SAST analyzer can also scan your C-sharp code to detect different varieties of security issues, which runs significantly faster than the existing analyzer based on security code scan. 
For more information on all these updates, please see the links in the description. GitLab has now introduced more powerful Linux machine types for GitLab SAS runners. When you run jobs on your GitLab SAS Linux runners, you now have access to two new machine types, medium and large. When taking a look at the documentation, you can see that the specs for medium are two vCPUs and eight gigs of RAM, and the specs for large are four vCPUs and 16 gigs of RAM. And some other features I wanted to mention are that the DAST API and API fuzzing now support a GraphQL schema for defining what is going to be covered by the tests. You can also automatically disable failing webhooks. This protects GitLab and users across the system from potential abuse or the misuse of a small few. You can also identify bot users with a badge, making it much easier to see who's a real person and who's a bot. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed, please click on that subscribe button. For more information on GitLab 15.4, as well as upcoming releases, please see the links in the description. And thanks again.